how's it going guys so i just recently created a blog um, tips and tricks the milky way and astrophotography where i discuss different things um, regarding astrophotography uh, i talk about in here something called stacking so i didn't go in depth about what stacking is because it's so complex um, but a lot of people ask me uh, about stacking so i'm going to be doing this video for you guys um, describing the different uh, steps to stacking photos to get a clear image of the Milky Way with like little to no noise um, So before we open up deep sky stacker, which is the program I recommend to use We're going to talk about a couple different things We're going to talk about light frames dark frames and how there's a blurry foreground after you stack your photos so What light frames are is basically your photo so you're going to take You know, you're going to make it you're going to get your settings you're going to take your photos, which are your light frames. You're going to want to take about 15 of those. Um, once you have taken your 15 light frames, you're going to want to make dark frames. So what a dark frame is, is it's the same exact thing as a light frame. The settings are the same. You don't touch your camera at all, but you put your lens cap on your lens and you take those, those same photos. So basically what this does is when you're going to plug in your light frames and your dark frames into Deep Sky Stacker, it's going to detect a noise pattern in your light frames and your dark frames. Um, and then it's going to eliminate these, this noise pattern uh, and give you that crystal clear Milky Way that you desire. Once you are done stacking your photo, you're going to notice that you have a blurry foreground. So I recommend while you're out on the field, after taking your light frames and your dark frames, don't, not, don't touch your camera. Just take your lens cap off and take a foreground shot. So boost your aperture open up your shutter longer to say about two minutes and then drop your ISO. That way you get a clear foreground that you can blend into your stacked um, sky to get your photo. So, okay, so let's go ahead and open up the deep sky stacker here. Okay, so you're going to want to open up your picture files. So I just recently did a shoot in Leo um, in Malibu. So we're going to come down here and get our light frames. Okay, so here are our light frames. We're just gonna wanna open these up. So I just hold shift and hit with the down key until we get all of our light frames selected. Don't, don't choose any of your dark frames yet. We're gonna do that in a second. So open these up in here and you can see they come down here in this drop down menu. So now we're gonna open up our dark files. So we're gonna go back down again until we see our dark frames. So like I said, same setting, same everything, only difference is your lens cap is on. So now that we have our light frames and our dark frames, before we get stacking on these, we're going to want to come over here and hit check all. That way all of these photos down here are checked. Once we have checked all these, now we can go over to stack check fixes. So you're going to see all of these different um, settings right here. We can come here, recommended settings. This is what I, this is what I recommend you do. Um, I've done a lot of research on this uh, and I've come to find that the recommended settings in Deep Sky Stacker is the most practical and just the easiest and gives you the best photo. So once you have chosen all of the recommended settings, you hit OK. And then all you have to do is hit OK. And there you go. It starts stacking. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this and then we're going to get going on how to edit and blend them. OK, so once you're done stacking here, you're going to go ahead and see. It's going to give you a preview. Okay. Um, it, once it's finished stacking, it's going to export it as a TIFF file to here. So this is my shoot, Leo Camping. You're going to see all these .txt files. That's, that's from the stacking. You come down here and you're going to see your TIFF. Okay, so we're going to open this up. Once it loads in. Okay, we're going to be able to see how our sky here, whoops, too much, is a lot more um, defined. There's a lot less noise than the original single file. But what we're also going to see is how the, the foreground, like I said, is going to be very blurry. Um, that's why we're going to be blending it. We don't want this blurry foreground, but we do want this sky. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Lightroom. Oops, not Photoshop. We're going to go to Lightroom here. And you're going to want to import your TIFF file. So we're going to go to Import. Okay, so choose your shoot. Okay, and we're going to want to import all of our RAWs. If you haven't already done that, then just hit, all you have to do is hit check all and import. Um, if you've already imported all your RAWs, all your RAWs, sorry, you're going to want to hit uncheck all and just choose your TIFF file. 
and import your TIFF file. So I've already imported everything. So I'm going to hit cancel and go back to your shoot. Hit develop. Okay. And now you have all of your shoots or your shots right here. So I already threw an edit on my foreground exposure and my TIFF file, my sky exposure. What you're going to want to do is on your TIFF file, just edit for the sky. Don't worry about what the foreground looks like because we're going to get rid of that later. So just edit for your sky, get your stars right, get you know, get your, your sharpening, your clarity, your colors. Um, go ahead and throw your style in there. And then we're going to head over to our foreground exposure. And we're going to do the same thing, except you're just going to edit for the foreground. What you want to do is match these up, um, at least somewhat. So don't make your foreground too bright and your sky too dark or vice versa. Kind of keep in mind that you're going to be blending them and keep them somewhat the same. Um, but one thing that you want to do before we open these up in Photoshop is go to one of your files, one of your edits, let's see, and then hit copy, um, check none, Oops. and then go over here and hit crop. And um, it's going to automatically click straighten angle and aspect ratio. We're going to do We're doing this because we want our horizons to be completely equal. And we want our aspect to be the same. So once you've copied those settings, go over to your foreground exposure and go ahead and click paste. Once everything is lined up and perfect, we can go here, right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop. And we want to do the same over here. Right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so once you have both your files opened up in Photoshop, as you can see here, what we're going to want to do is blend them. So there are a million different ways to do blending. Um, this is just the way that I prefer to do it. I found it the easiest way to do. Um, so what I like to do to start is obviously we're going to want to delete these locks and just create these as layers. So once we're done here, once we have the locks deleted, I'm going to click V and I'm going to move our sky exposure. I'm going to drag it. I'm going to drop it right on top of our foreground exposure. And we're going to line these things up. Okay, so now that we have it on top, what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask on the top on the top layer. We're going to come over here to the gradient tool. Make sure you have black and white chosen. And then we're going to drag from the foreground up. So the easiest way to get a straight line is to hold shift and drag up. So you don't have to go too high. Just go to like about right here over the horizon. And what that's going to do is drop your foreground in. Um, so obviously this isn't a perfect blend, but it, it's pretty, pretty close. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to get this more accurate. You can do a clone stamp um, to get rid of all of this right here. Um, we can do an eraser tool. We can do, you know, like I said, there's a million different ways to use Photoshop. Uh, I'm not going to go too in depth about Photoshop. I want to keep this just about the stacking um, aspect of it. Um, but yeah, so as you can see here, in our sky, you can see how little noise there is. And obviously in our foreground as well, you can see it's just it's just a clean looking image. Um, so as you can see, there's benefits to this, especially if you're using a crop sensor. You're already at a disadvantage because you don't have the ISO capability as you would with you know a full frame camera. Um, this is a way for you to get you know a better exposure of the sky um, and reduce that noise that you're going to get you know, at high ISOs with a, with a crop sensor. And the same thing with the foreground because you're going to be taking a longer exposure at a lower ISO. So um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a comparison to a single image versus the stacked image. So I'm going to zoom out here. Let's see. I'm going to zoom out. So this is a single image that I took in the same, on the same trip with virtually the same settings. I think maybe the exposure was oh, like two seconds shorter. And then this is our stacked image. So let's go to our single image and zoom in on the sky here. So as you can see, um, there's a lot of grain in the sky. This is just from a single image shot at 6400 ISO. And then the stacked image, whoops, the stacked image here, you can see how little noise there is in the sky. Um, what this does, I mean, it, you can just see right here, there's plenty more detail. Uh, everything is much more crystal clear. 
and it just makes your you know your like I said it makes your shot that much cleaner um, so hopefully this tutorial was beneficial to you um, I don't do very many tutorials um, but I, people were just asking me about this stacking uh, so I thought I'd throw together this video for you guys and show you how I do it um, this is just my workflow like I said there's a million different ways to do everything um, this is how I do it um, if this was beneficial to you please let me know in the comments um, if you want to see tutorials on some other things um, I'm more than willing to do it uh, just let me know what you want to see and then uh, we'll put it together but uh, yeah thank you for watching and uh, until next time